Hello everyone, this is another Face the Black Nation timely video. And today I want to discuss our favorite person, Lizzo. Now, Lizzo, we all know she is a mammy. There's no doubt about it. Um, there's a video of her recently putting down her pants in France doing a show. I'm sorry, in Paris, doing a show and she pulled down her pants and then she started twerking whatever that she has back there, which is a lot of flap. Um, I really cannot wait until her 15 minutes of fame is up because to me, if you have talent, then you won't feel the need to go through the extremes in order to attract people to come and to see you. Because see, back in the day when a person had talent, they did not have to use shock value. They actually let their talent sing for themselves. They actually let it be seen and they didn't have to behave in a buffoonish uh, manner being a menstrual show all over again for themselves they did not have to participate in the negative stereotypes that they do have for black people it just goes to show you how people without talent that they was never given enough attention attention when they were growing up as a little child see it all goes back to the state of how they was raised because see if an individual was given enough attention from there was a child then most of the time they would not be attentive attention seeking as they get older because those around them will show them the love shower them with love that they also need in order for them to grow up and to be decent civil human beings on this planet earth but we have way too many of our people especially when the parent when the parents or the parents singular have not shown their child any love because of sometimes the parent wasn't shown any love by their parents so therefore they just repeat the cycle it's a burning cycle a vicious cycle that constantly happens in our community that needs to be addressed we have so many of our young children out here that are behaving in reckless behavior and causing all type of problems and strife for those around them because they did not have proper guidance they did not have the proper love and they did not have the proper attention that was supposed to have been given to them when they was a child now going back to Lizzo now this is what she is saying here she is saying that complicit silence is partially to blame for transphobia racism and fat phobia now people who are involved in silence against racism that's one thing you know because see and we we cannot help the color that we are born in. People are always going to be racist towards us. It does not matter what. See, that's the reason why people hate us because we are black. So we cannot help that. And I hate it how individuals want to attach racism along with her words. She is saying to blame for transphobia and fatphobia. You see, transphobia, there's no such thing as being transphobia or fatphobia. No one is scared of you if you want to be a transgender and no one is afraid of you if you want to be overweight, morbidly overweight or obese. No one is afraid of that. Maybe they don't want to get crushed by you, but no one is afraid of that. See, the thing is, our bodies were not meant to stretch beyond belief to the point that you have to wear a size 3X. That, that's not the point of our bodies. Our bodies was not meant to do any of those actions. With all seriousness. So when, so people who wants to voice their opinion about you because of the way how you're shaped. Maybe you should want to do something about it. But no, what you want to do is continue to eat the third, fourth, or the fifth double stack cheeseburger from McDonald's. With four supersized fries. And then a large Diet Coke on the side. That's what you want to be able to continue to do. And then when you get home, you eat you eight pieces of Popeye's chicken wings. The family menu, which is supposed to be for a family, but you eat it by yourself. And one day, instead of spreading it out within three to four days. That's what you want. You want people to not be able to say anything about that because you know that it is a disgusting lifestyle, a disgusting behavior that you are presenting to yourself. Now, as far as those who are transgender, if you want to say that you um, live as a, a mouse 
or that you identify with a keyboard or that you identify with a couch or that you identify with a cat or a dog because what they call them is trans species if they identify themselves as being a cat or a dog or any other type of animal and then you if you want to say that you identify with the alien even though we don't know how aliens look so how can you identify yourself with something that you don't know how it looks you know those people have not been silent about how they feel people have not been silent about how they feel about racism people haven't people continue to speak out against racism but we know that i'm tired of um individuals just what you would call it i'm tired of individuals piggybacking off of the struggles that our people went through and what we continue to go through because what this individual said Lizzo said that she has never heard a reason why someone is transphobic she thinks that we know why these people feel this way there will be less support for these ideas because the why is more insidious than we realize the reason why people are sick and tired of transgender it has nothing to do with them being transphobic the reason why they're sick of them is because they're sick and tired of their lifestyle being pushed down and shoved down our throats. Everywhere we turn around, we got to see, oh, I'm trans this, I'm trans that. Just yesterday, if I'm not mistaken, they just gave another woman of the year to a biological male. For it to be celebrating Women's Month in the month of March, they I did a video talking about Hershey's, how they promoting a, 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 a transgender woman. I talked about that. And now they gave an award to another transgender woman who happens, who is a male. They are a biological male at the end of the day. You cannot change your DNA no matter how hard you might try. You cannot change that. It is what it is. You're still, you're never going to be a woman. You're never going to be a female. You're never going to know what it's like, what we have to go through. You're never going to experience the things that we are experiencing every single day as a woman. You, you're never going to understand how it is to have bad cramps when it comes to that time of the month. Or any other type of hormonals um, differentiate that happens to our bodies every single day, especially as we get older. You're never going to experience having a womb. You're never going to experience having a child grow inside your belly. For nine months. You're never going to experience giving birth to a child. You're never going to experience when your hips have to spread in order to give birth to that child. Which is the reason why they call giving birth a miracle. Because you're giving birth to another human being that came out of you. You're, you as a male, you're never going to experience that. No matter how hard you might think that you could try to get a uterus transplant, your body is not made to carry another human being. Your hips will never spread uh, in order for you to give birth to a child. All you have is a mutilated penis. That's all you have. And you try to have it to mimic a, a actual vagina. It would never be a vagina. No matter how much you think it is. See these individuals. This is the reason why individuals are never going to go along with their lifestyle. Because it's a lifestyle out of um, out of foolishness. Yeah it's a lifestyle out of foolishness. Degeneracy. And now it's just that. It's, a, it's, it's confusion. It's all around confusion. You say you was born in the wrong body. You know what? Maybe I would never understand how that feels, you know, but at the end of the day, I don't need to understand. I don't need your lifestyle to be constantly put in front of me. If you don't want to constantly see heterosexuals lifestyle being put in front of you, I feel the same way about your lifestyle being put in front of me. That's exactly how it is. I'm so sick and yet so tired of these individuals latching on to our struggles because, see, they could change that. They could say one day, you know what? I am not a transgender woman. I am not a transgender man. I could go back and be the sex that I was born in, that I was born as. I was born as a male and I was born as a female. They can always revert back to that. When it comes to you being fat phobic, which is again, there's no such thing as fat phobic. You can always do something about that with being big. It's called going on a strict diet and going to the gym regularly. Making sure that you watch what you are eating and going to the gym. Every single week, at least five to four days a week. 
You're making sure that you in there sweating. You making sure that you drinking plenty of water every single day. You're making sure that you getting the best workout that you can in order to lose that weight. I know I did. I was 230 pounds and I did something about it. I now weigh. I went down to 165. Right now I put on a little bit of pounds due to COVID. I want to go right back to the gym, but I do know one thing. I am nowhere near 200. I am nowhere near 190. I am nowhere near 180. I'm at the 175 um, size. And I know that I want to lose at least 10 to 12 pounds. But see, I know how to, I know what to do. And it's called eating right, drinking plenty of water and going to the gym. You see, if you, because see, they, they are trying to force this type of lifestyle this negative lifestyle down our throats because see right now going back to what Lizzo is saying that they're over here saying that she's an activist for social justice and inclusivity um she is supposed to be doing something for Victoria's Secret Victoria's Secret no I don't want to see all of that cottage cheese when I look at Victoria's Secret Angels I don't want to look at that I don't want to see that. If I don't want to see my own cottage cheese and that's the reason why I'm doing something about it, what makes you think that I want to see yours and yours is overly and yours is morbidly obese with it? I don't want to see that. It's absolutely disgusting. There's nothing fat phobic about it. There's absolutely nothing about that. It's just that I don't want to see some, some body parts that's not meant to be flying in the wind. That's it. And I have a right as an individual to say something about that. See, that is the problem. They over here thinking that people cannot voice their right. People cannot voice their opinion without them being afraid. It really is a shame that you have to be careful and be watchful at what you say to make sure that your page, your page doesn't get taken down or anything like that. I'm not being transphobic and I'm not being fat phobic. What I am saying is, is that I don't need to see your lifestyle in front of my face being forced upon me every single day. Every single time I turn around and I turn on the news or I turn on the show or I turn on social media and I see your lifestyle being, sho your lifestyle being shoved down my throat. I don't want to see that. And I have a right to voice that when it comes to you being obese, when it comes to you being overweight, morbidly overweight, you can do something about that. But when it comes to racism, that is something that we cannot do unless uh, white supremacy as a system has come to a complete end. That is something that we as black people, as foundational black Americans are trying our best to do is to destroy that system. And it's a system that has been along for thousands of years ever since they came out of the caucus mountains and went around and started destroying and deleting everybody around them committing all type of genocide against whoever that is um, melanated you can look this up that is their history so you over here want to be so inclusive and everything. You want people to just accept any type of lifestyle. Everyone was brought up with morals. There are people that was brought up with morals. There are people that was brought up with structure. There's people that was brought up with common sense. And there are people that was brought up with logic. And the reason why those type of lifestyles are never going to be accepted because it goes against all logic. It goes against all reasoning. It goes against all common sense for you to say that you identify or you want to transition into something else. That means you're not happy and what you're in. And that means that you need to see a psychiatrist to see why is it that you are not happy in that particular skin? Why is it? Why do you feel that you have to become somebody else in order for you to be happy? Why is that? You need to seek help to figure out as to why that is. Now, it is one thing to be born. Uh, uh, it, no, no, no. Because when you are born, you are born with the clean slate. There is no DNA that says you're going to turn into one of the LGBTQ+. Plus. There's no DNA in our body. There's no cell in our body that says that what you have is your, your, your environment that is around you. Some children have been exposed sexually to deviant things when they have been a child, which is the reason why they know about sex at an early age. But now they want to force that. They want to groom our young children now who are innocent to accept such deviant behavior like these drag reading, um, 
uh, programs at the library and things like that. They want to groom our children to be uh, easily preyed upon by sexual predators. And we cannot allow that to happen as a society. Because as a society, we cannot protect the youth. Then we are done for. What is the point? We're supposed to be protecting the innocent. And yet we are over here giving the innocent over to these predators' hands. Especially in the black community. We cannot allow this to happen. Just because it might be acceptable in white society, it should not be acceptable in black society. And white society, they have always done sick, heinous, evil things towards their kids. No matter what. All of that lifestyle came from them. It's just that their lifestyle was forced upon us by force torture and the r word we know what that is the r word we know exactly what that is that's how it's been forced upon our people in jamaica it was known to be the butt breaking island there have been uh sex farms here and uh and uh the u.s itself and we all know exactly what happened to our black men our black women and our black children so why on God's green earth would we want to accept a behavior of someone who wants to live the opposite of the way how they was born? Now you, now some of them, well, some people may say I may be a little callous, but I'm saying like this, maybe I do need to, I'm not going to deny you your dignity. I'm not going to deny you your humanity. I'm not going to deny you of that. But do not expect me to accept your lifestyle. And I have that right not to accept your lifestyle. That is my right. That is my right. I have that choice. Just like you don't want to accept me being heterosexual. I don't have a right. I have a right not to accept your lifestyle. The way how you live your life. As long as you're not hot, uh, bothering any children. That's fine. But don't come forcing your lifestyle on my down my throat, on my family's throat, on my friend's throat. Don't no one wants to see that all the time. And I'm so sick and tired of this type of lifestyle being pushed upon us. And then when you have individuals like Lizzo who is out here paraded around like a mammy, because that is exactly what she is. And mammies are usually what? They are big. They are overweight. They have a negative uh, stereotype of the black community. They are a walking minstrel show. They do any and everything that white master says for them to do. That's a mammy. And Lizzo, she is exactly what that is. That is the reason why she behaves in the manner that she behaves. And now she wants to talk reckless out the side of her throat. Really? We as black people have always faced racism. Always. And that is something that we, we constantly are, are fighting. We having a battle with. And people are not quiet as to how they express their racism towards us. People are far from being quiet. They're not in silence. They let their racism be known. But as far as with the other two, the transphobia and the fatphobia, you know what? Those are things that you could correct. Those are things that you can work on. You see, because a lot of this so-called transgender, we, we, we see more so of the transgender male, I mean women, that, that's trying to encroach upon women. You don't see that with the transgender males. And the reason why is because they know they can never be a male. No matter how many hormones that they go through, they can never be a male. They, they give birth. Men cannot give birth. It's biologically impossible for a man to give birth. You never heard of that. You only heard of a woman giving birth to a child. Men do not have uh, menstrual cycles. Women go through that. We have a uterus. Fallopian tubes. Ovaries. We have all of that. Only a woman can go through that. Not a man. Now you see why an individual is like, you know, we are sick and tired of hearing you all because it's based upon confusion. It is nothing but sexual confusion with the goal to stop population, to stop the spreading of population. And they're trying to push that and force that among the black community by using these black celebrities like Gabriel Union and Dwayne Wade. These individuals, they are pushing out in front of the black community, trying to chastise us, trying to tell us that we should be accepting these people. We don't have to accept them. It is all right. It is all right 
our constitutional human right to not accept that lifestyle and we should have the right on how we should raise our children to also not accept that lifestyle that is a lifestyle that we do not want to accept and we have that right because it goes against all logic that's the thing it goes against all logic it goes against all things that is common sense it goes against all things that is reasonable that for the life of me i don't understand how these people can cannot grasp that but yet they want to get mad at you when you come at them with all type of logic and with all type of sense they want to get mad at you like don't get mad at me because you're the one that's confused as to who you are and then when you get older you kind of find out that you wish you never did the transitioning but now you can't go back on your word you can't go back and redo the things that you have done. The minute that you remove that male genitalia, that is it. That is done. That is gone. There's no regrowing it. There's no surgery to redo it. As these transgender women, the, the doctors cannot give you uh, a male genitalia. They cannot give you that. They can't give you that. There's no possible way. They can't give you something. It's just not possible. So I'm going to continue to stay on top of this uh, this individual because I am so sick and yet so tired of her. And it is people like her that is a detriment to the black community. People like her, we do not need in the black community because she is also helping contribute to the downfall of the black community. And I also had to make sure that I word things in such a way not to be so offensive, but at the same time to express my grief because it's very tiresome. I'm tired of it. I'm very tired of how crazy this world is going because we got to put up and deal with the we got to put up and deal with those who are not thinking clearly. People who are not thinking clearly are the ones that is have the loudest voice in the room. We have the insane running the asylum. That's what we have in. And this is the reason why we are experiencing so much craziness in the world. And it has to stop. It really has to stop some type of way, some somehow. It really has to stop. All right, so I just want to make sure that I came at you with another timely video. And I will be back at you again. Thanks for listening.